It is the Anfield Wrap. I'm Neil Atkinson, and with me I've got Kieran Mullen, you Paul Hogan, and Stu Wright. Delighted uh, to be settling ourselves down. Uh, Kier was on stage in Benidorm uh, on Monday night with Boss. Uh, I'm on stage in Liverpool in Metro Cola. Uh, the Anfield Wrap will tweet it out, doing an event around Liverpool's new home kit. Uh, with the Spark Design Academy and Subside Sports. Really looking forward to doing that. Uh, going to be going through the history of Liverpool kits with two uh, very, very, very highly rated kit designers who've done, for instance, kits for national sides, including England. They're going to go through what Liverpool have done, how it's inspired them, and look at this season's kit. So come and see us on Thursday from 6 o'clock after work if you're in the city. Uh, just come along to that. You must be looking forward to Benidorm massively. Well, that's come from nowhere. It's come from nowhere. It's going to be a big one, you know. <laughs> I mean... When um, when I got the phone call, I was like, would you go to Villarreal? I was like, well, obviously I'll go to Villarreal. And I was like, um, would you go through Benidorm? I was like, yeah, what are you thinking of here? But yeah, I was uh, it happened so fast. I got a phone call Thursday, confirmed on Friday, gig on Monday. Design work? Done? Let's Boxed? Do this. Yeah, yeah. So it's all, going, it's all going ahead. It's all booked in. I'm on a six o'clock flight in the morning, straight to Tiki Beach. <laughs> Excellent stuff, excellent, excellent. So if you're out there or you know anyone who is going to be out there before what will be a great Champions League semi-final, get yourself down, see Keo uh, with Boss. It'll be the absolute business. I believe John and Craig are doing something That's on there as well. That's it, I say, the Anfield rapper on yeah. board, John and Craig are out there. Yeah. See what state they're in when I get there. Exactly. Uh, it could just be a counselling session by that stage, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? <laughs> just just, just, just two cries for help. Um, but we've got to try and view it. We've got to try and accentuate the possible positive... Uh, so what I'm saying is you might have a lot of work to do you might have to carry everyone here <laughs> I'm ready for it I'm ready for it you're a pink up semi-final I'll carry you as well just, just translate for Gibble <laughs> uh, brilliant stuff honestly really exciting brilliant end to the season as well it's a great time to be a Liverpool supporter download the Anfield Wrap app but I say that every time instead come to the event on Monday night and the event on Thursday because we're trying to enjoy every last minute of this Speaking of which, Newcastle United nil, Liverpool one. Enjoyment, Paul. There was a lot of pre-match nerves knocking around. I think for this one, it was one of those where you woke up on Saturday morning and you realised that the bravado of we're on the march on all fronts at all times, maybe just maybe might have crashed into a little bit of reality. Uh, Wednesday night, Saturday morning, Newcastle being in great shape. All of that's the context for what is, I think, one of the best Liverpool performances of the season. Yeah, I mean, I um, I had the nerves, um, and you know, Klopp t- telling us about the R twelve kickoff and keep pointing it out didn't help me nerves. I don't think he loves talking about it, doesn't he? <laughs> I keep th- every single time that you're going to get your players out here at some yeah. point, and seemingly uh, they just go ignore him. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, but, but the more the more I listen to 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 you lot talking, to be fair, beforehand was around like you know. St. James's Park maybe not being at it, although obviously BT decided to tell us how much they were at it every 10 seconds before the game and stuff like that. I was watching on telly. Um, but once we kicked off, we were just talking before we, not, we, we came on that then, and once once we kicked off, I, I never felt the game was in doubt at any point. I know it was only 1-0, but you know we absolutely dominated that game. Loads of re- reasons or excuses why we, we maybe wouldn't have turned up. You know, semi-final of the Cup, co- co- two and a half days to prepare, Dropping possibly our three best players, or most three of our most important players, and we'd be just totally dominated from from one end to the other of the pitch. The really weird thing, Keir, was the thing I said beforehand was what I don't want is there to be only one goal in it last ten. And then by the time we got to the last ten, there was only one goal in it. I was sort of like, we're fine, we're absolutely fine, and that, and that that was what came as a surprise to me. If you'd have said to me before a ball was kicked, it's going to be one 0 Liverpool ten to go, I'd have gone, oh no. And by the time we got to ten to go. I was just sort of beginning to think about what we're doing next, if you see what I mean. Yeah, I was, I was saying to you before, there was, a, there was a few people yesterday who were, who were a bit nervy before the game and stuff, and me personally, I, I felt okay. But, like you say, 1-0 with 10 minutes to go after playing Wednesday, it's not, it's, not, it's not the ideal situation, but I wasn't worried. I, wasn't, I didn't feel it. I felt in control. I felt that we've been here many times on the club this season. It's just gonna, and it did. Liverpool just carried on controlling the game and got the job done. It's to me, Stuart, it's, it's fascinating because they've gone on a bit of a journey this season. You know, they did they, they've dropped some silly points. The key thing I keep saying is they were involved in some classics. Yesterday was a brilliant Liverpool performance, but it wasn't a classic. It wasn't a classic game. It wasn't one that, you know, for instance, will grab the attention of, of the nation on match of the day or anything like that. It was the epitome of a performance of a side that can break 90 points. And once they were playing football once they got past the first 10, I'd say of both halves, really. I think Newcastle start the second half quite quick as well. Once they got to 10 minutes and 55 minutes on the clock, they just looked so in control. Yeah, we're, we're a machine. 
We are. I mean, there's no other better way to put it, in my opinion. You know, you hear about in the in the past it was referenced about you know the red machine and the, that's yeah. the way it, it seemed in the seventies and eighties. My God, we are a machine now. It's it's unreal. We can just go through the gears at at ease at will. The level of control that you mentioned, then, Kyo, I mean, we had them at arm's length the entire way through, didn't yeah. they? I mean, by the end, you know, you referenced that last 10 minutes there, they didn't want to know. They had no fight left in them. They'd been ground down. All hope had been sucked out of their soul. They had nothing left. They didn't want to know. The only one who even demonstrated any kind of frustration or annoyance at any point was Joe Linson yeah. when he, he kicked out a couple of times, had a bit of argy-bargy, but, but they knew. That there's there's levels in the game and and they just can't touch us when we're in this kind of form. It won't be forever. We've got to enjoy it while we've got it yeah. because right now we look unstoppable. It's it's staggering to me. I'll come back to you, Stu, again before the game. There's two ways of looking at it. If you said to me before the game, uh, basically Newcastle ten to go, it's only going to be one nil. I'd have said, oh god. If you'd have said to me, Liverpool are going to have twenty four shots, Newcastle are going to have four. You know, two on target for Newcastle, eleven on target for Liverpool. Even the you know the expected goals, if you just want to go there, Newcastle zero point one five, Liverpool two point three two. That's absolute dominance, you know. And this is the the thing about this is these have been, and I think it's sort of widely accepted in domestic football at least. They've been the third best team in the country since since the turn of the year. They've got more points than than any other side apart from us and City. They might even have got more than City, but maybe not after yesterday. And the level between them and Liverpool on their ground, that's not an Anfield yeah. thing, that's their ground. Everyone's bigging them up, BT are bigging them up, everyone's doing Newcastle, the revival, Newcastle, the environments, Newcastle, the, the culture, everyone feels great all of a sudden. And then they run into Liverpool and Liverpool make mincemeat out of them. They do. Uh, physiologically, medically, Liverpool are defying science. Everyone's telling you at this stage of the season, we've got to rotate because everyone's legs will be going and we're in all these competitions, you just can't keep going. It doesn't matter who plays. They've ratcheted it up. They've gone to a, a higher tempo. The level of pressure now, everyone's been commenting on it, whether it's from the fans or in the media. You know, you, you can't help but see um, that we're just swamping teams. I mean, even that that even in the ninety third minute there with Robbo at the end. Mm. Uh, what the club say? He was running hundred and fifty mile an hour, but, and it seemed like it. I, I don't know where they where they're getting the energy from, but it really it must be. I mean, obviously the the they're so well primed. Um, from pre-season, I saw a stat the other day that on average... 50 normally, and we do 90. 90 a week, 90k a week of running. Unbelievable, if that's true, you know. Uh, and it, I think it explains a lot, but I, I find the fact that... Klopp's obviously called them mentality monsters. We've all, we've all got onto that over the last couple of years, but to do it at this stage of the season, to be able to... Because, um, you know, when we're talking about the level of control, you only get that level of control by, as I said before, sucking out all hope, making it physically impossible for the opposition to compete so they end up just submitting. They have nothing left but to give in. And and to do that, the level of physicality that's that, that's involved is, is incredible. And the partially... Well, not partially, it explains the changes both in terms of the pressure that's been on some players week in, week out, Keo, and then also the, um, the, the, the players who come in and, you know... They all do a really good job. He picks his moments really, really well, Jürgen. And he, 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 you know, I don't think it's any accident Trent Alexander Arnold could do with the rest in a game. And he gets a rest in a game where they play a lad who's a six foot four target man, left wing. And suddenly there's Joe Gomez. And it's not that Joe wins every battle, but you know, you feel as though Liverpool, uh, the reading the 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 sort of the, the the green, the reading the the the, the, the eddies in the lake as it moves through. You know, the reading it from months in advance. Almost you feel Liverpool backroom staff and all the changes yesterday were the absolute business. Everything is calculated from him, absolutely everything. And you made a point earlier about Joe Gomez coming in. So no matter who plays, that there's a point where in the game, I can't remember what minute it was, where Joe Gomez steps up and uh, you said you think you think he's in trouble a second, and next minute he just steps up and he hasn't been in the side hardly at all this season. And he's come in in a game where, as I say, Newcastle away, half 12. We're, 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 we're going to be coming on the back of playing how many times in the past two weeks? And he comes in and he delivers. And it's not it's not a personnel thing, it's a system thing, isn't it? It's, the, it's, it's getting done on the training pitch, no matter who comes in. We've built a side where it's a job, not necessarily the player. You know what I mean? If you take that player out whether he leaves or whether he's injured, the player that comes in has got to be able to do that role, not what he does, but play right back or play left back. It's the system. And no matter, no matter who comes in at the minute, they're doing the job. They're doing it properly. They're doing the job. The game's won in midfield. For me, Paul, that's part of why they can't get near our goal. You know, you, you, you can 
you can talk about that stuff quite cheaply. They can't get near our goal because of how well the midfield plays. It does two changes in there. Keiter and Milner both start. Uh, Henderson shifts to six because of it. I, I think it's a real wake-up call. There should be another wake-up call for us. This endlessly adolescent idea that all of, all of Liverpool's footballers have got to be pitched against one another. You know, that X is better than Y and he shouldn't be near the team. And what about this fella? And he played brilliantly. Why does he get man of the match when the other lad scored the winner and all this? For me, it's absolute nonsense. Those yeah. footballers all appreciate each other. And yesterday, all three of those midfielders showed their absolute class and their importance to, to this Liverpool side. I thought all three were, you know... You give any one of them out of the match, I don't care. They were all within touch and distance of each other and they were all within touch and distance of being the best players on the pitch and they were all a million miles better than any Newcastle player. Totally, totally. I thought we won the game in the midfield. That gets said a lot, doesn't it? But I thought that that we very much won the game in the midfield yesterday. I thought Keita, and, and I have thought Keita for some time now, has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, the, the, the information he puts on a football when he makes a pass dictates what, what's going to happen next. Everyone talks about Thiago in that way, but I think Keita's got that kind of... Yeah. Um, that kind of ability as well I think his ability to, to win the ball back again Thiago's getting loads and loads of credit and he's been phenomenal but Keita equally wins the ball back at the right time and knows what to do with the ball I, I just I, lo- I love the angles he finds with passes as well he's always looking for a slightly different angle on a pass and it, it, I just really enjoy him watching him at the minute um, I thought Milner was phenomenal yesterday uh, he played a few weeks ago and people are really quick to call that he's finished that almost every time he comes on a football pitch people are looking to say it didn't look anywhere close to being finished to me there get that contract signed as far as i'm concerned and and henderson does what henderson does you know we've written him off it all fans have written him off a million times but he again he so important to us yesterday um love getting booed um, I think I think he literally wanted to play just to be booed. To be honest, yesterday, um, love getting subbed. Uh, I've never saw Edison so happy to get subbed just so that he could get booed on the way out. So yeah, it was Kaita is, is it, you know these are all around midfield performances now, Stu. There's not a bit of his midfield game that's that's lacking. He's he's eight nine out of ten in all bits. You know he wins it back brilliantly and he keeps it when he wins it back, which is unbelievably valuable for this Liverpool team. It's not a big tackle and it goes out for a throw for them. It's we've got the ball now and we're going. Uh, when he wins it back, movements brilliant, really cool for the goal. Loves taking it past people, angles on passes, like Paul said. It is it's tremendous to see him come to the party completely in this way. I think he's been one of our best performers all season. He has, and uh, I mean, I might be being hypersensitive here, but uh, I thought it was staggering last night to hear Danny Murphy say that Kaita's had uh, a lot of criticism in recent weeks from, <laughs> from, <laughs> from <laughs> City fans. I don't know how to do. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, he's he's been brilliant, and uh, it's it's been so lovely to finally see him really get a, a you know a prolonged. It's not necessarily a run in the team because he's not playing every week, but it's that prolonged period where he's available all season and he's playing regularly. He's important. It's a prolonged period of being important, important to the team and yeah. producing and producing performances given the level of that importance. Real contributions and real responsibility on his shoulders, which he's happy to take on. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I think he's always wanted to have that responsibility, but his body's let him down. He's been frustrated, and and sometimes it's hard to get out of that that well, isn't it? But um, I, I, he's been great. The level of composure for that finish, by the way, was was incredible. If you you would expect that to have been one of the front three, yeah. To, you know, to to be fair, so and he has got a great finish in him. You know, we've seen it, we've seen it time and time again that when you know when he does arrive in the box, he he's got something in his locker there. So yeah, I think um. When you look at the options that we've got, with we've been talking for the last few weeks about the options up front, but the options in, in, in field are, are tremendous. And when you do see you reference Milner there, I thought he was great. Yeah. I thought he was he was absolutely flying in that game, and um, you're almost you're almost keeping Milner caged, aren't you? It feels like, and he's he's desperate to get out of his cage, and it's like we released him yesterday, and he was able to, you know. I think he loved going back to a former club as, as well and being able to strut round. You know, with this team in a leadership role, brilliant. Um, so I, I struggle though. I mean, the, it, it, you co- commented there about the we won it in midfield, but I also think whenever I think about the midfield now, I I do constantly refer back to the the back four because of how far mm. how high they play and they are playing like midfielders. Mm. They're playing like you know uh, auxiliary midfielders, always there for for an extra pass. Um, so it, it's like having seven. In midfield, not three. Yeah, you know. So, uh, yeah, uh, complete domination. I feel like sorry, just I feel like the the press is different now because of that. Because we've compressed the game so much mm-hmm. that Ka- Kaita's ability to press now is you know it's over 
two or three yards rather than five or six yards, which is massive. You know, a, a, a little bit of what City bring to the game, a little bit, I suppose. We took a bit of that, but still, I've got that madness that we bring. Our midfield has become effective, more effective. It's it's been it's been good for a, a long time, but even the we say what Nabi, Nabi is now contributing a lot more. Mm. And you say you look, you can see he's enjoying that, and that this I think we've got the type of players that need to be inside where the you know they can contribute and they feel like, like they've got something to give. I think I think Naby Keita he's getting a new deal on the stage of this club, mm. I, and I want that. I mean, I, I hope that happens. I mean, we'll probably talk about new deals another time. It's not the time to be talking about you know contracts and stuff. But looking at the midfield, <clears throat> we obviously need to bring a midfielder in, but I want to keep the ones we've got. Just I mean. We we can compare we we often compare players to players within our own squad you know because they they might come in uh, to take the place for games when they when they have a rest like Thiago there and, and Kaita but actually in Kaita I'm seeing more and more of uh, of Kaita um, for me anyway I'm comparing him to Gundogan I think Gundogan at City is I think he's a brilliant player I think a lot of the attention will go on to De Bruyne and Silva for obvious reasons and Foden now but I, I think Gundogan's one of the most influential players in that squad when he plays he always contributes he's an all round midfielder he can do everything. He's so tidy, so intelligent, and he's so dynamic. And I, I see such similarities with, with, with Keita when he's in when he's in this kind of form. There's not a job in the midfield that I don't think Keita could do. And I, I, I would say the same about Gundogan. The, on on the idea of Keita, Keo says there's Stuart about him enjoying himself. One of the things things the managers talk talks all the time. I think he talks about most arguably his rhythm. And for me, that's what you currently get to see from Naby Keita is that he's got himself into a situation. I think it's been there all season. It's worth remembering that one of his injuries this campaign that he's had comes from being absolutely walloped by Pogba being a yard dog because United are getting B five nil on their own pitch. You know, that's not a that's not a muscle injury. That was literally he was kicked out of the game for a month. I think that when he's got himself back in all season, when he's been playing, he scores at Ultra Trafford, for instance, he looks great in that game. I think one of the things you've seen the benefits of and what he's enjoying is he knows where he is, he knows his teammates, he's in rhythm with them, he's in he's got relationships all over the pitch. I think he's really impressive. Yeah, that. I think that's helping him as my point. Definitely, definitely, and he's not alone with that. We've seen that with Massive as well. And I think what you've got to look at there, you don't just look at the players. You look at the decision that the manager made to bring in yet another expert in the field of being able to keep players on the pitch, keeping players fit. You know what was it? Was that last season? It was during the season last season. Yeah, you know, and I don't think we saw it pay dividends straight away because it wasn't in part of that pre-season. But we've seen it pay dividends this year. Look at the way Matip's been managed, and actually, he looks. He looks in his prime again now. He mm. was fantastic yesterday, um, and I, I think this, I think the same with Kaiser. It's really it's given us greater value for money, if you like, for the players that we've invested in and that we keep investing in because we're able to get them, get them on the pitch more. They're able to contribute more. They they they, they feel like they're in their prime, um, and yeah, I I definitely think there's a contract in the post yeah. for Kaiser. There's got to be. There's got to be. The, it seems the. The Henderson six thing, you know, it's, it's happened on and off. He plays a lot there when we win the league in 2019-20 because Fabinho gets the injury, so so Henderson carries it through. For me, I think Fabinho's the best in the world in the position, KO. But for me, there's a, there's, a, there's a value in Henderson playing there against a certain level of side where it's as much about tidying up opposition attacks and then setting a tempo for Liverpool, but doing it a little bit deeper than where he often does it when he's on the right-hand side. You know, I think against... Sides that are somewhere between almost, you know, sort of seventh, eighth down, home or away... Sometimes I think there'll be an argument just to just to drop Jordan in there for a game here and there because you get to see what you get yesterday where he moves you forward 40, 50 yards on the one hand but on the other hand can do a lot of the mucky stuff you need doing. Yeah, I agree with you, to be honest. And like, You made the point there. The year we won the league, he was brilliant there. So we have confidence in him in that position. We know we can do, we know we can do a job there. Well, that's a bungling thing to say. You can do more than a job. He's effective there. But the point you made then, yeah, being able to dictate it, there's, there's definitely games where... We'll see Henderson, I think, in the six going forward, and maybe next season as well. I think it's one where he's got a he's got the range of passing, I think, but also just the idea of forcing it. I thought there was a couple of balls yesterday. Liverpool played Milner plays the one over the top that we should maybe do a little bit more with. There's the great one for Diaz that Salah runs onto when he gets through one on one. These aren't the the one over the top. I think that Milner plays or sort of on the right there gets Diaz in on the left hand side. We should maybe make more of the opportunity. The ball's bobbling around. These aren't the sort of the the razor accurate passes of a Tiago or a Keita, but they're like you're going to go and win that, and that's a re- you know when you get to see that sort of game yesterday against a good side but not a great side, you can see the value of those passes. Paul, that Liverpool are able to play Henderson, Milner, and a couple of others where it is. It's not to your feet. You're going to go and win that, 
Yeah. And I think that's a brilliant thing that we've got in our locker that maybe even City don't have. And I think Henderson Milner, they, they, they very much know where, what's needed at any particular time, don't they? So they're, they're very good at choosing the moment to do that. So Henderson will spend five minutes putting five, five, 10, 15 passes together, five yard passes when it's needed. But he also knows when it needs to be a bit more than that or when we need to, you know, play for, play for, uh, you know, what it, Play, space. Play, play for space, play, 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 get the ball higher up the field. He's he's really good at making sort of them decisions, and he's also really good at encouraging others to make them decisions. You know, he, he is a captain, you know, all, but, and and Milner's the same, uh, a, a force on the point when we need to, but also knowing when actually we just need to take our time here as well. That, that's what both of them bring to the table for us all the time. Both of them did it brilliantly. They were trying to press Stu, and I think it was interesting for sort of five to ten. They were really, really aggressive, and they, and they, they rattled Liverpool a couple of times, or they made Liverpool do stuff they don't normally do, kicked out to touch on a couple of occasions. And then I just thought everyone, and you, you were right to mention the two centre backs as well. Everyone just went, no, we'll just play through this. Calm, calm, calm. Relax, relax, relax. We'll just play through this, and then, then, and this is where the game does turn. Suddenly Liverpool are turning into space. They've suddenly got so much room to move into, and that's the gamble. If you know, in Newcastle. They threw the dice. They went, we're going to see if this works. Fair play to them. It's, it's the braver approach, I'd say. But it didn't work. Liverpool were too good. Yeah, you've got to expect it as well. I think you, you go away from home. You, you've got to expect the first 10. The team's got to, going to try and unsettle you. Um, but this Liverpool team's too long in the tooth now. I don't I don't mean you know, in age, but certainly in experience. Smiles on the clock of um, of big games. Being able to ride out difficult situations. They know it's the bread and butter. They know what to do. They know how to to kill a game when they need to. They know they know how to you know calm a, a crowd down. And they they've got a, they've got not just a bunch of of cool heads, but they've got a bunch of lads who exude coolness as well. You know that confidence. Yeah, I don't think you can put a price on that. Um, you know players like Van Dijk and Allison. And Matt, they just can't. They they are. It's it's impossible, I think, to rattle them. It's really impossible to or almost to to get under the skin and to make them panic. Um, they're too well primed in what what the the game plan is uh, and how to get out of those situations and how to buy time uh, on the ball and just take a few minutes out the game. Um, and you know, it's just a matter of time. Then they know before they just build up a head of steam and that 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 control uh, within the half. And I think we, I think within twelve, fifteen minutes, that was the case. Done. They were they, they were finished. They were done. Other players who impressed, you know, in different ways. Really, the two fullbacks, Keo. I think Gomez. We'll, we'll circle back around onto Gomez, but the idea is. He's not a right back first and foremost. He's most definitely not Trent Alexander Arnold, and that's fine because no other right back is. So he, it's it's a challenge for him. Flip side is Andy Robertson is Andy Robertson. It's unbelievable how much of an outlet he is. It's unbelievable what he does across ninety minutes. He's got the mindset of a winner. He's got the he's got the heart you want from a player. The ability is there, and his, his relentlessness up and down the left hand side. I've never you said before. I agree. I've never seen a left back like this, especially for Liverpool. He's, he's the best left back we've ever had, in my opinion. And he seems to be getting better. Yeah. I didn't think it was possible because we signed a lad from for 8 million quid, you know what I mean? And you think, yeah, no, oh, he's a good player, him. And then you get Klopp's making him into a world beater. And you think, sort of like, Klopp's elevating him. He's elevating himself now. The performances are getting better and better and better. And I don't know where he, where he stops because I don't know what, what much more he can do because he's doing stuff that I've never seen a fullback do before. So long may he continue. Like I think the idea of him getting better shoes is interesting because I think there's a couple of things here. I think he's he's one of the Liverpool players, and I think there's a few of them, and that's the 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 characteristic. What are the characteristics that Jacob's looking for? The closer they get to the idea of potential greatness, they don't wilt from it. Quite the opposite. I've been saying it's quite interesting when 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 City have been in the position for a quadruple. Guardiola's gone into press conferences and almost gone, don't you say the Q word? Yeah. Whereas when we, as this has happened with Klopp, Klopp's gone, yeah, it's a laugh and it, we'll try and win some games, eh? And and it's been, it's felt like a bit of a different mentality within that. And that's not to say one's right or wrong, but I think that what Klopp's doing is right for Liverpool and it's right for the Liverpool players. And it feels to me as, you know, Andy Robertson's not lying awake at night thinking, oh God, this is our one chance of genuine greatness. He is, he's sleeping soundly because he's thinking, I can't wait for tomorrow. You know why? Because this is a chance for genuine greatness. And every single game, he just reflects that for me. Yeah, that's right. The, the, the love and riding the wave, aren't they? They're embracing it um, every day, you can see. And um, he is getting better. 
I think. Um, Which is mad. It, yeah, it, 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 it is mad. It's mad because yeah. I didn't think it was possible. Like. I, I think. I, I think. The, I think on his mind next will be to weigh in with a few more goals. I think there was he's the, trying that he's though. Trying. He's the, trying. He was he was almost in yesterday. He was he was in at the back post and um I think um I think Man uh, Kaiser might have had a had a shot from outside the box and it was just, it was an easy ball there, but I uh, says me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah he is he, he is getting better and that is all down to his mentality. You can see the kind of you you, you see in the interviews and his relationship with the other players as well. He's so humble with it as well, and he doesn't let anyone get ahead of themselves. You know, if any and he's getting interviewed and then the player next to him has got man of the match or whatever. You know, he's already winding him up. He saw it with Henderson the other day when he when he was claiming the goal. He saw it with Milner yesterday when he got man of the match. Um, it's it's just a great character, and when you've got players like that within your dressing room who who are so strong mentally who were on top of the world, but still desperate to improve. In the 93rd minute, he's, he's finding another level. All it does is it influences everyone else around you. It raises the standard of everyone else around you. And we've got we've got a squad full of cultural architects now in that dressing room. We've got a squad full of them, players who are just feeding off each other, motivating each other, and pushing each other on. Um, they'll, come up, they'll come up points where... In, in Liverpool aren't going to win every game forever. It feels like we are, but it, it's not going. It's not going to happen. But you, you have every confidence that that won't knock them out the stride. They'll just pick it up and start again. You made the point about we're not going to win every game forever, and I think we all know that's the case. But it happened last season. We we got we got put in a situation where we we couldn't buy a win, and the, and the mentality of the players has shone through to the point where we're challenging for four trophies the year after. They would they'd be. I reckon the rest of the country were laughing their heads off. Yeah. In January and February last year, like, this is the worst title defence we've ever seen. Liverpool, and they were dying to say it was a fluke, it was a one off season like they did when we won it in Turkey and all this sort of stuff. It's not. This is. There's no underdog mentality here. There's no like pushing above, punching above our weight. We are the best. And the players know that. Like, not in the sense of like an ego thing. They know they've got the best manager, the best setup, the best fans, the best, the best club. You know what I mean? We are the best club in, in, in world football for me. So to go and lose, play, you know, Nat Phillips at centre half, and and you have your keeper scoring headers on the last day of the season. You're not telling me it's like it's not in their head. You know what I mean? Like they didn't give up. The keepers coming up for corners and burying them. <laughs> do, you, do, do you know with that though as well? I wish I find a remarkable. I suppose I was hitting it out of there. I mean, when you say they they know they're the best. Well, I think there are clubs, there are players, there are teams out there who. Um, may feel that their team, their club, their fans are lucky to have them. But what's really interesting about our club, our players, our manager, every one of them, you can see it a mile off and they'll say it openly, they feel like they're lucky to be there, part of this, not the other way around, that the club's lucky to have them. And, you know, that is a... When you're, when you're top of the world, to have that level of humility is incredible, but it's also the thing that I think that contributes to driving you on for more because you just don't want it to stop and you'll do everything you can to keep riding that wave. Like tell your husband to sign a new deal. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> the, with the, the, the Robertson thing yesterday, I, 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 certainly when I'm watching on the telly, I look for the little, little markers where a camera will cut to an opposition player. And almiron has been playing well recently, and I bet you he thinks he's one of the fittest lads in the Newcastle squad. I bet you he is one of the fittest lads in the Newcastle squad. The camera cut to him about 60, 65, and it was like, he was great. He was like, How, is this, how's this still happening to me here? And that's, you know, I, I'll say it again, he probably is. You know, if you were to rank all the players in the league, who's the fittest and have those conversations, I reckon Al- Amaron's, he, he's, he's probably top 25%. It's a big part of his game. He gets around the pitch. They love him for it. They rate him for it. Andy Robertson ran him into the ground, I thought, yesterday, Paul, and that is... That's testament to, to so much as well. Yeah, I think he, I think he's one of them lads in the squad. I think there's, there is lots of them and that is a culture, but he's one of them lads in the squad that that sets the tone and sets a precedent and says, no, this is this is what we have to do. And I I agree, like this team does know they're the best, but they know they're the best because of the effort they put in, because of the the work they do behind the scenes, and that they, they, they acknowledge that that's a big part of why they're the best. And that's why they continue to do it. Whereas other teams, maybe we're the best because we're, you know, we've got all the ability, we've got all the whatever. Well, this team recognizes, I think, that actually so much of that is about the work they put in, not just about 
you know, having having this ability off the pitch as well. Mm-hmm. And Robertson's for me is that is is that player who he's, he he never takes anything for granted. It's I know I have to work hard to be in this team, and if I if I stop working hard, I won't be in this team no more. And I think he he, he still feels like he's he's fighting to prove himself, even though he's done so much, which is you know testament to him really. Lad has got not something to prove. I don't think he's got something to prove, but he's obviously had a bit of a sticky season. Gomez Keo when he. he does really well again at right back. He is a centre back, you know. I'm sure if he came in here now and you said you were right back or a centre back, he'd laugh at he'd laugh at he'd your face the question, for the question. Yeah, he's a centre back. He, he says that a lot of time and time again. He says it time and time again. He'd start right back for 13 of the Premier League teams. I think I was trying to work it out last night. I think he'd start right back for about 13 Premier League teams. That's how how capable he is in that position. That's how good a footballer it is. It's one of the things that makes him, I think, a potentially but actually at times a brilliant centre back. He was great yesterday. He was just no nonsense. Did his job brilliantly. Put some excellent balls and some good contributions, some good stuff across the box. Uh, won his battle. How many centre backs will play at right back and see, like, keep getting played at right back and keep going in there doing the job? And I think he knows if he keeps going in there and keeps keeps doing his job, he will get the chance at centre back mm. for Liverpool. I honestly think our next long term partnership will be Canate and Gomez at centre back. I think you look at the age of Van Dijk and Matip. I think that's the reason why I would never let Gomez go anywhere because. By that point, Canate and Gomez could have been around the same signing pitch for three years, mm. four years, and all of a sudden they're slotting a centre back in his favourite position. And there he goes, I told you, like, I am a centre back. Yeah, I can go out at right back and play for 13 Premier League clubs, but the reason I'm sticking around at Liverpool and playing at right back is because I'm probably going to end up the centre half. I, I, I think you're being conservative with the 13, yeah. Neil, to be honest with you. I, 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 think, I thought he was brilliant yesterday, and I, I think he's, when he's played right back this season, um, and particularly. Um, of late, I thought his performance levels have, have really gone up. Now we're starting to see, um, we're starting to see fitness-wise and confidence on the ball of the Joe Gomez we knew pretty injury, and I think it's almost been a perfect. He might, he, I'm sure he wouldn't agree. I'm sure he would like to have had more game time at centre half, but I actually feel it's been a perfect pathway back to put him in a position, as you said, thank you, for to be competing for the centre half position next next year, be in the mix for that. Um, I mean, some of his touches yesterday were great, but also that one you referenced before about when he, he stepped up. Um, Van Dijk does that all the time. He's the last man, isn't he? He'll be the last man and he'll he'll make the decision. He'll got everyone else out and at the very last second, he'll make the decision to step out and, and catch three of them offside. And Gomez did that in that move yesterday for, for, from right back. And uh, I, I, for me, it was Van Dijk-esque, you know, and you yeah, can just well. see the influence they have on each other on the training ground, the hours that they put, on, put in on this type of stuff, but also... You've got to be switched on, both physically and mentally. You've got to be really in gear to um, to be able to pull that off at the level that we do. So that was a really great sign to see. You could see him transferring that into centre half, no problem, without without missing a beat. Even when he was on on the um, on the right wing yesterday, and big switches were coming into him from across the pitch. And he, it, it, the way you take it down, no centre half, no centre half takes a ball it's down like that. You know, it's incredible. So I, I really, really do think that there's. I was worried about him six months ago. I was worried about how was his pathway back, but I can see it now. Um, minor downer, but that it is really Liverpool win the game. Uh, they win it one nil. Bit more from the attackers, Paul, and I think we'd have been talking nil three to be honest with you. It's not just chances that get missed and they do a little bit there's a couple in there that that you know Manny takes that one early uh comes across it with his right foot just flashes past the post I think if it's a foot the other way uh the keeper doesn't die for it, it's in the back of the net but I think it's not just those chances more sorts of chances to create better chances I think repeatedly for that Liverpool side uh, it becomes a good game to have a slightly off day because we win <laughs> but I think you know and I don't just mean even the lads who start I think uh you know Salah comes on as well he misses a good one-on-one opportunity they all just had, had one of those days in front of goal. It's absolutely fine. It's just, <coughs> excuse me, choked to death. N- not everything was perfect. Yeah, and you know, you, all three of them, I would say, played reasonably well as, as individuals. I don't think any of the, no, anyone had a poor game. I think um, Diaz was an absolute threat all the way through the game, as he has been since the day he signed. Jota was probably more in the game than I saw him yeah. ever in a Liverpool shirt, possibly. Um, and and Mane, Mane does what Mane does. I... I it it did feel a little bit wasteful in front of goal. It felt like that final pass was just not quite on it for them today. today. I, I, I'm how often do they have them days though? So I'm sort of oh when they all seem to have them. That's yeah, what's interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's very rare that they all have them. Normally one of them's doing the business. And and he was still getting into them positions. Yeah. There was still enough there that you know Manny on a, on another day would have had two probably 
Jot, Jota had the header and, and a few other little bits and, and things around. So I think hopefully just a little bit of an off day. But but again, all of them still still seem to be in form in general. They were all they were all in the game. They were all an outlet. They all what I find amazing about all of our forwards is how well they keep hold of the ball. You know how yeah. how really they give the ball away is just scary when you look at other teams and watch other other forward players play. It's ridiculous. Um, they were top of the league. For a few hours, Keo. Uh, only a few hours. City results a little bit of a blow. I felt that Leeds could maybe do a thing, but then Leeds could still go down. Being fair, you know, they are in the bottom five, Leeds, and that may well be where they are as a team. But I thought there was maybe a little something in it. You know, Liverpool I had put the pressure on, they'd done their bit. Just a bit of a shame, really, that, that, that at some point you want to hope, obviously, that it breaks it, it breaks our way once. But I think we've got to, we've got to be patient and stick it out. Well, what can we do? We play first. But for play, sorry, we play before them. I think most of the time bar once is it now so all we can do is win the game and put the pressure on them there's nothing more we can do you've got to win win convincingly and then say hand it over to them and there's literally nothing else we can do they're impressive city it's a good win that's me we watched it and first half Leeds were in the game they just got they just had i mean they were i think they were in control of the game to an extent you know what i mean they, had, they, they looked a better team certainly looked a threat um, but they just couldn't do anything put it together in the final third um, they just fall to pieces um, and they couldn't hold the ball up and, that, and there was no outlet for them I think they've really missed Bamford you know missing throughout the season has, has killed them hasn't it really but they, you know there, there was a little bit of hope there um, still going into the second half uh, and then obviously <laughs> it's the hope that kills you isn't it really by the end um, but I, th- I think there's still I think there's still hope there I think uh, when you when you look at the West Ham uh, it's West Ham away, isn't it? Yep. And if they're out of the Europa League at that point, you know they've 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 got skin in the game and they've got something to play for. Uh, so that won't be an easy one. But all, listen, all we can do is, is do our job. And if uh, if it doesn't come off for us, then we we make sure that that it's a glorious second place. We you know what I mean? It's a memorable. It's it's, it's a great second even, place of all time we, again. Can't look back and be like we should, we didn't put the performance in there two games to go. We've got to just keep this going and and keep moving with it. And there's a there's a there's a chance that we win all four trophies, and we've got we've just got to keep fighting for them. I do think City are in a, are in a position with the minute where their game. Like I said this to you outside before, when we played City twice in a week, our game level was so high. So when we went to play Man United, the level of concentration, everything was up there. City have had a similar period where they're playing Liverpool and they're playing Real Madrid. So for Leeds, I mean, you've got Real Madrid. On the training pitch last week, you're talking through the Real Madrid game. The level of game is high, so it, I think it depends, to be honest, massively on how they do in the second leg. I actually think if City go out in that second leg, then they might slip up again in the league. It's 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 funny that there's obviously a lot of talk about who's got the harder running, and actually I think that at this point now it's become almost irrelevant um, because, as I said before about Liverpool just being a machine now, it just it just feels like Liverpool know what needs to be done. It feels like they're just capable of. I know they can just get through, find a way in every game, and and where City have dropped points generally have been in the games that you don't expect, you don't see it coming. And I've also just got this, got nothing to base this other than my gut. But they had to do this in so eighteen, nineteen, City, and win every game to keep us at bay, and they managed to do it. Everyone's making the assumption that they'll do it again. They probably will, but I've just got a feeling that this could be ours. I really do. I'm, I'm, I refuse. I refuse to allow myself to hand that over. I just don't think they look as invincible as they have done in the past. And, and you know, they won 4 nil yesterday, so it's, uh, I'm basing on probably not a great deal, really, but they just don't look like a team that's enjoying themselves at the minute. They don't look like a team that everything's sort of working quite to it, the 100% that it has been in the in the past. They get, they're picking up knocks. I think Aki went off injured as well yesterday. Um and you know that's another one down. I don't know how long Walker's out for. Um, they're going to do everything they can to get Walker on the pitch midweek against Real Madrid, which, by the way, can backfire. We've seen that in the past. Mm. They yeah. are going to be so desperate to get Walker on the pitch. I think. Yeah, I, I, yeah, and I, I say they, they, you know, they, they've got it. If you're a City fan, you would assume they're going to win every game. But I, I just don't. They're, they're not flowing like they, they were. They were previously, and I think we are. I think we we feel like we're getting stronger as the season goes on. They. F- they're not limping over the line by any means, but they're not. They're certainly not in the form that they were earlier on in the season. I would argue. 
It's almost coming. To, it's coming to an end too soon for us, isn't it? Yeah. You know, if there was ten games to go, you think this is this is ours all day. This, you yeah. know, you just almost feel like an, a level of inevitability. But it's just whether time ticks away on us too soon. Mm-hmm. We'll see. We will see, indeed. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much, as Stu says, on the relative qualities they're running. One of the things that yesterday told you was that theoretically Newcastle are the a number three in the list of of where everyone's up to, and Liverpool just power away from them. I think this. They've got to play them, we've got to play them stuff. Genuinely, it just feels like there's a massive gulf between Liverpool and City and everyone else. And I'm, I'm not... It's it's the idea of, can someone... Have we each got sides? And I think we have got a couple, and they've got a couple where you, you're able to look at certain players possibly troubling over a period of the game and then maybe riding the lookout uh, the sides as well. And the big thing is, the thing I'll keep saying, is we just need a side to get them to 60. If we've won first and a side gets them to 60 at nil-nil, you know, the opening goal yesterday comes from a set-piece. By the way, he's good. Uh, just get them to 10. You want mine sixty at this point. You know what I mean? <laughs> take, take it ten at a time. Ten at a time. We're going all the way, uh, but I think we are going all the way, uh, and that is the thing to to focus on. Um, we're going all the way, possibly in the European Cup as well. Villarreal away. Keo, you're heading out there. As discussed, um, two nil is a massive advantage. I think it's you know now because they've got rid of the away goals rule. It really is the cliche of it is two nil at half time. That is the nature of it. Um, the thing is, and it's not dissimilar to what I was saying about the Newcastle one, the one thing we don't want is for there to be only one goal in it with 10 to go. You know, if that was the case, I'd back us to be able to see it out. Don't get me wrong, you get to see it yesterday. But with a big crowd, big night game, big atmosphere for them, biggest game of these players' lives, biggest game of Villarreal's existence, the trick's not to concede first. I think if Liverpool score first, they go through. Yeah, I think we will as well. I think the other game the other night showed that um, I've, I felt in, in the ground... A little bit frustrated watching the game back. It was, it was probably the most straightforward game we've had all season. Um, obviously, they had a game plan to come to come to Anfield and not get absolutely walloped everywhere. Um, and they didn't. Two nils, not four nil. However, Liverpool. We've just been talking to you know eulogised about them for the past ten minutes about well they're playing. They seem to be getting better. Um, don't concede first. Put the performance in, and we're in the European Cup final. I think it's. The don't concede the first part is is a massive issue with it. There's you know, let's go through bits around the team. You'd think Fabinho and Thiago are both coming back in. You'd think Canate is probably coming back in. Stu, you'd think Alexander Arnold's possibly coming back in. Be surprised, but it's possible Shimakas could come in for Robertson. The manager might have a little eye on that. I think at the minute you'd have to tear the shirt out of Robertson's cold dead hands, to be quite honest with you. But the manager might decide he's brave enough to to, to have a go in there as well. And then obviously you think Salah comes back in. This is, you know, Liverpool those lads have all had, you know, they, some of them get a bit of time on the pitch, don't get me wrong, but they've all had a decent enough rest to be able to focus in on Villarreal next and and, and it is all about scoring first. Yeah, I, I think the Simicast shout is, is, a, is a decent one really, particularly if Canate comes in because a set piece could be important and if you've got, um, I mean, I mean, Robbo's great at them, but Simicast has he's got a bit of a wand of a left foot, hasn't he, for, from, from the dead balls and if you've got them coming from, from him and Trent with Canate powering through, um, from a corner, from a free kick, that might be enough. That might be enough to just kill them in the first half, and and that's all we need. What we, as you say, Neil, what we don't want is that becoming a bear pit, bear pit, and you, you know you get, you get a sense that they might try and Anfield us here, you know, and turn the tables like we've done so many times. So I think we've got we've got to be prepared for that we need steady, experienced heads in there. I'd go as you know as um, as near to full strength as possible. As as you said, certainly playing Thiago and, and Fabinho, and I I think you want an outlet as well. So I think you, I think you'd have Diaz in, mm-hmm. um, and then I, I find it, I, I find it impossible to think that Salah's not going to play after he didn't start mm-hmm. uh, yesterday. So, and then from there, I think, I think you've got a little bit of room to manoeuvre, um, but an outlet like Diaz who can carry the ball because Salah doesn't doesn't carry the ball in the same way that Diaz does, does he? You know what I mean? And uh, you can just, you can just give it to Diaz and <laughs> it's gone, <laughs> it's gone, and you know, and you, you can all clear your hands, you can get out and uh, let him have it for a few minutes. Um, so yeah, I think that'll be really helpful. And yeah, just I, I don't think that they're gonna do though. I don't think they're gonna come out the blocks really fast. No, nor do I. I think they'll try and you know if they can get a goal around sixty something like that and make it the last half an hour one goal game. I think that might be Emery's plan. I, that, that's what I, Paul. That's what I think. I think if you're them, one of the things you're looking for is let's not be out of it by seventy. And then if we have to begin to play some mad moves, do some you know put the pressure on, try to rattle Liverpool. And that's what they'll be about. I think I think Emily would be happy enough with nil nil on sixty. I yeah. even think he might be happy enough with nil nil on seventy, to be honest, and then see if there's something in it for them. Yeah, totally. I mean, they they're, they're technically still in the game, aren't they, at this point? And 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 the longer they can stay in the game, the the more they'll feel like they can they can do something. Um, I I 
I think um, I think Liverpool potentially kill them off really early on in this game, and and it, and and then the five subs become a real blessing for us, and we can start being able to do something. I, I think that I think that's probably the case. Although I would, uh, you know, we, we've had cases where we've had like the Benfica game where we we feel like at any point we could have walked away with that game, but we we, we just play played sort of probably 70 percent just to, to keep. Keep sort of the gap, but that's different because that's at Anfield. I think Possibly, this. I think yeah. I, I think they'll know we can't. You know we can't slack here. I think if we get one, I think we'll be looking pretty quick to see if we can turn it into two. And then maybe then you are four nil up and you play like you're four nil up a little bit. But mm-hmm. you know I think that's. I think Anfield was a was a bit of a factor in the Benfica one where we knew we were in our ground. We've got the subs. That's what I, what I think is interesting for for the selection. You know if he does do for instance Shimakas is obviously Robertson's on the bench and if it does get a little hairy. I think there's an argument to be able to have a couple of different moves with your subs. One's to be able to rest, but another one is to have a moment where every sub makes you stronger. Every sub, you know, it means that if, if it, on the off chance it's still a live game at 90 minutes, Liverpool are, are as strong, if not stronger, on 90 minutes than they were when the game kicked off. Yeah, yeah, that would that would make sense. Um, yeah, I think I think for me, you're not going to you're not going to change a great deal. Are you you're going to go strong and give yourself options and. I, you know, watching them the other day, they've obviously done something to get where they where they've got to in the competition, but it didn't feel like they had a great. I know they were playing like in that style, and they were trying to ensure that they didn't concede goals, but they never felt like a threat at any point, really. They said, they said, it was interesting afterwards. Um, Emery said, "I was I was saying it'd be interesting if anyone asked him." And then I found the quotes afterwards. He said, "These are a different level to Bayern Munich and Juventus." I think that's the point here. They've done well at home here against Bayern Munich and Juventus, but I think the legs has actually fallen quite nicely for them. You know, if they've got to make the run a little bit, I think I think they will try to conserve and will try to make the end mad, but that comes with its own risk, which is, i.e., if you're going to let Liverpool have the ball, Liverpool can hurt you. And they, they, they now know they've played us. They know we're better than Bayern. They know we're better than Juventus. Yeah, I, I think it's, I think that's Emery just using his loaf, to be honest, isn't it? Like, it's it's it's, it's clear Liverpool at the minute are a team that are going to run you and run you and run you. And if they try and come out the blocks with us, the chances are then we are going to pick them off and it is going to be 1-0 quick, 2-0 and then we, you can play like before 0 Emery doesn't want that. So yeah, going back to what you said, I think I think it's a situation where he knows Liverpool are a much better side than anyone else they faced and even at home, even with you know 60,000 yellow scarves up and a load of noise, Liverpool can still dominate this completely. So he probably will try and frustrate us and go down a, sim- a similar game, game plan which he did at Anfield but just don't concede uh, like two goals like he did at Anfield. And if you can get one, or if you say not get one and get to 60 minutes and make things difficult, that's the route he's going to go down. And he'd be a fool if he didn't, because if he tries to come out in the European Cup semi-final against this side and thinks that he can go toe-to-toe with us, he's going to get knocked out. And he's not a fool. That's the thing. He's not a fool, Emery. Uh, he's shown he's not a fool. He knows what it's about. It'll be a tough game for Liverpool, but I am pretty certain they'll be able to do what they need to do uh, against this Real side. Uh, as anyone, I mean, we're all obviously worried. We should be a bit nervous. The Champions League semi-final, but is anyone more nervous than, than, you, than you'd expect, or is it? Are we all pretty, pretty confident? Pretty confident? Yeah, yeah, confidence. Just simply, just simply because the, the the mentality and experience that this, this team have shown to ride in it and out now, they can find a way. Okay, excellent stuff. Download the Anfield Wrap app if you haven't already. Uh, have a go at everything that's on there. Loads of fantastic stuff in the build-up to VRL. People are out there already, uh, and they'll be producing more stuff for you on Tuesday video and audio writing as well. Everything you need on the Anfield Wrap app. It's been a pleasure, Keo, Paul, and Stu, uh, for the Anfield Wrap. How couldn't, how couldn't it be a pleasure? Liverpool are just simply that good.